us that you will have so many of these questions. So today I want to talk about our call, one of our call, and according to the text we are going to look in a moment, is we are called by God to bless, and we will explain what it means today. That's why when you come to church, you are blessed. And you go out of here, and the blessing of God goes out with you. So we turn to the text on slide number two, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Finally, all of you, that's all of us, should be of one mind or live in harmony, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tender-hearted, keep a humble attitude, don't repay evil for evil, don't retaliate with insults when people insult you, instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will bless you for it. You are called to bless, regardless of the circumstances, when you don't feel about it, when things are dark around you, you are called by God to bless. Amen? And because of that, God will also bless you in return. That's what the text is telling us. Earlier in the context or the background of this uh, letter of Peter, earlier in the earlier chapter, Peter has given many words of exhortations, of teaching, guidance to s specific groups. Like he addressed the Christians and the letters as citizens. We, we are part of a society, we live in a country, we pay our taxes, we respect authorities. He also talks to the slave or to the, the workforce, how to, what kind of attitude should we have toward our employers as we go and work and uh, fulfill our duties, earn our money and all of this. And then he talks to the husbands and wives, how they have to treat each other and conduct each other uh, at home. But starting from this verse onward, is addressing us as members of the church. We are members of one another, and he is telling us what goes on in a healthy church, or what should go on in a healthy church. In slide number three, we are looking more closely to verse eight now. He, you know, Peter could have given us a long list of things, do this, don't do this, don't go there, like the, the do's and the don't. But instead, he gives us uh, something that has to do with our character, not with what we do. This is more important what we are than what we do, according to Peter here. When it comes to the church family, it's about character, the person, the kind of person that Peter is calling us uh, to become. And you will find five qualities, five characteristics that we need to have in this new person that God is making us to become. Number one, we are called to live in harmony. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean that we have to think the same, do the same, dress the same, you know, and everything. There's room for diversity in the church. But it means that when it comes to the essential salvation, God, the church, the purpose, the missions, and all of this, we have one mind. I have a friend in China, a missionary friend, who has many times told me this uh, Chinese saying, Ruguo bu tong xin, bu nang tong xin. If you don't have the same heart, you cannot walk on the same road together. We cannot partner if we don't share a, a, a same heart. And this is exactly what happens here. If we don't have this uh, harmonious spirit, this unity of, of mind, this common mindset when it comes to the church. You know, one thing that I've realized through the years of being a pastor and a Christian in church, I've seen many problems are taking place in churches at times, but one thing that I have personally learned is to look at other Christians and realize that God loves them as much as he loves me. They share the same grace as I do. So, so when we start to, to think like this, there's no room for competitions and there's no room for self-assertions and uh, you know, all of these things that cause this unity, jealousy and envy. We, we, we go beyond that because we realize that other people who do not share the same opinion to me, they love Jesus as much as I do. They love the church like I do. We go together to church, so we share when it comes to the essential about God, church, the, the, the way of life. We share the same values. Amen? Hallelujah. Number two, we have to be sympathetic. 
that comes from sympathis. Sympathisix is the same word, actually, the Greek word has become an English and French word, sympathy. That means being able to feel what others feel so that we can respond with sensitivity to the needs of people. And if you look at the context of this letter, how it was written, it is written in the, in the background of persecutions and sufferings. And sympathy, to begin with, uh, is very much related to suffering and persecutions. We feel the pain that other people feel. We suffer along with the person's sufferings. We feel these kind of things. So that is what uh, he is talking to us uh, this morning. We have to have this kind of uh, heart, and it is by association. You know, if I stick with uh, Keith Moody here, and we, every Wednesday, we are together now, we take the train, we go back to Taipo and Fanling together every day. Every week, we meet each other and we talk to each other. By association, we will develop uh, a feeling for one another. We will develop an understanding, a type of sympathy. So if one of us get into trouble, uh, a, a chronic disease, or we are going to, to die or whatever, there should be a sympathy feeling, like uh, if one of us go through a trouble, there should be a feeling uh, that, that, that is there. Number three, there's the brotherly love. When it comes to the church, you know, we are from different countries, we are different, you know, color skins and everything. We are not to look at each other in the church as strangers or just acquaintances. That like we come here, we listen to the word and we go. No, the church has something more than that. When you come to church and you are a member of a church, you are family. We are heirs of the Father. We are one. We share the seed of our Father, the, the character of our Father. So when you come to church, if you are part of Lighthouse, don't see yourself as, as an outsider. That's not what we, we want you to feel like. You are part. Because this is God's church. You belong to church, to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. We are one. We are brothers and we are sisters. And we feel for that. Number four, we should have tender heart. In all of these qualities that he mentioned here, this one really insists. And it is from the heart. These feelings that we are talking about must come from, from the heart. So it's not only <coughs> speaking flattery or saying, God bless you, but not thinking about it. It's not only positive words or positive attitudes. It's more than that. It's from the heart. It, you mean it. It's the opposite of hypocrisy. We, we, we don't say words and think something else. This, this, this is here, brotherly love and tender-hearted. It is to be well disposed to each other from the heart. It is to think well and wish well. You know, sometimes when people upset us a little bit or we're not in a good mood, we sometimes, I don't know if you are like me, maybe I'm the only one like that, but sometimes I don't think well. I think something bad or I feel that this person has something against me or something wrong over there. Not with me, no, of course not. Only with that person. So we have this kind of uh, approach. But here in this, this text here, it's really to think well and wish well of the person and not to entertain this kind of negative uh, thinking. The, in the first service I quoted and I pointed to uh, my dear brother, uh, Stephen Hibombo here, because uh, through the years we get to, to meet with him and know him. And he is a man of peace, a peacemaker. Uh, a man who has this, this quality here, tender-hearted, that consider other people's uh, good before you open his mouth and like uh, judge something or you know or discuss something. You, he always approach it with having thought, thoughtfulness considerations of other people and something positive that the outcome of a conflict or of a decision to make will lead to something good that it will lead to win-win situation at the end not for me i'm right you're wrong this kind of thing so really uh, brother stephen has, has shown that to me uh, looking at his life number five uh, humble and spirit 
humble in spirit means really to be kind and to think of others well, not to put ourselves more. You know, again, we go back to the same place. Jesus loves you as much as he loves me. So there's no room for competition, jealousy, and envy in the house of God. So when you look at all of this, we are all being loved by God. So when no need to push, no need to fight. God loves me. God loves you. God is patient with me. God is patient with you. Amen? So all of these five words are a description, if you pay attention, from what is inside. It's all about the inside. There's no like, do this, go there, uh, work in this way, uh, run faster. There's no like this. It's really from the inside, qualities from the inside. So it m puts uh, in more importance what we are over what we, we do. Do what we do is also important. And this kind of qualities are not humanly possible. It does not belong to the human nature. We're not born like that because we have sin, we have pride, we have selfishness, a lot of it, self-gratification, self-assertions and everything, fight for your rights, all these kind of things. This is how we approach life and relationship. So in order to live like this in a family, in an harmonious family, you have to be born again. You have to have experienced the miracle of a new life that God has brought into and to you. You need, you need that. It is possible also to live like that. You know, sometimes you may look at this as, I, 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 this is not me. I, I'm so uh, carnal and I'm always angry and I'm so full of jealousy and I cannot forgive this one or that. It is possible to live like that. It's in the Word of God. But you need to have the work of the Holy Spirit, the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. So if we go to the next slide, we will go to verse 9. We have looked in verse 8 more into the inner transforming transformation. We have been transformed and we have become like this. We, we are becoming like Jesus, in fact. We are becoming like God. These are the qualities of God that we just described and we are growing into that. Now in verse 9, it goes a bit further and says, okay, how does it work? How, how, how will we live and conduct ourselves when we have this kind of inner transformation. And then verse 9 here, it's like going to actions, behavior, conduct. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insult when people insult you. Instead, what do we do? Pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do. Who has called you to bless? God called you to. So if God called you to do that, then you better do it. And it is possible to do that. And that's what God wants you. And what happens when you do bless others and practice this lifestyle? God bless you over. You receive a blessing. So we will talk a little bit about uh, this, this kind of things. In order to develop a, a culture of blessing, we need to understand what blessing means because, the, you know, there's a lot of distortions of doctrines when it comes to blessing and uh, extremes teachings and everything. So what does the Bible mean when we talk about bless or blessing? We will start with the Old Testament. We'll click number one. The Hebrew word that is most often translated bless is pronounced or s something like this, I cannot guarantee you it's pronounced properly, birakao. And it means praise, benediction, liberality, and prosper. The, these are all words that are included. That's quite a generous word. And we have an example in Genesis chapter 1, verse 22. It says, God bless creation. He blessed the animals. He blessed nature. And he blessed Adam and Eve. And he told, be fruitful and multiply. See, blessing leads to multiplying, being fruitful, fruitfulness. In verse 28 of Genesis 1, he talks to Adam and Eve with a blessing that they have dominion over creation. So that's what God is seeing. That is his intention. That is why he created Adam and Eve, the world. It is to be a blessing. It is that life will be good. 
That is the intention that God has, that there will be liberality, prosperity, freedom, happiness, and all this. When God called Abraham to the promised land, he says, he promised to bless him, again this word, make his name great, and through him to bless all the families of the earth. So that is how we start to understand what blessing means, this word that God says, he blesses us, he blesses creation, he bless Abraham, and he bless you. The blessings here are clearly associated with happiness, welfare, and prosperity. There's growth. There is, you know, Abraham succeeded. He went on with his life, and life went, went better. The second Hebrew word for blessing is esher, and it is translate happiness. Uh, but the, 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 the root word means to, to be straight, to be honest, to go forward, and to prosper. In other words, when you live rightfully in righteousness, rightly before God, you do, you do what God instructs us to do, what will happen? First of all, you will not go up and down and be depressed about yourself and regret and all this. You go forward. You live correctly. You live with wisdom. You do what's right. The result will be good to you. You will prosper. You will move on forward. So that's the idea of that. Blessed are you when you live the way God teach you to bless, to, to live, because there will be a positive outcome in your life. Your life will grow. Your life will lead somewhere. That's the word Esher here. And you find it in Psalm chapter 1, when it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk with the wicked, does not stop, does not sit, and does not counsel with them. So he does not. He make a choice. Blessed, happy is the man. His life is going to be good, because he does not follow the wrong path. But instead, he take his delight in the law of the Lord, the wisdom of God, the word of God. That's what he desires. That's, that is where he learns about life. He meditates about it. He consider decisions and what is, how he's going to conduct his life. And says, he will yield its fruit and its season. Already a good result. Blessed is this man. Happy is this man because his life will bring fruitfulness. There will be an, an, an increase, a growth, and says whatever he does, prospers. Whatever he does, prosper. That is good. That is the blessing of God in the Old Testament. Happiness. A life that prosper. A life that grows on stronger. That is God that he desires for, for all of us. For Adam and Eve. For creation. For Abraham. And for each one of us. Amen? Hallelujah. So the, 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 the Psalms are full of reference to this kind of happy blessing for those who love the Lord. In the New Testament, there are also two primary words that talks, describe uh, blessing. The first one is makarios. Makarios has a similar meaning as the one we just discussed, happiness. And you find it in the Beatitudes of uh, Matthew 5 and Luke chapter 6. Blessed is the poor, or poor in spirit. Blessed is the peacemaker. This is the pure in heart. Happy is this man who chooses to live as a true disciple of Jesus Christ. His life is set to live according to God's desire and God's uh, w w pleasing the Lord. So blessed is this, is this man. It described the, the happy state of those who find their purpose and fulfillment in God. The best life available is for those who love God and choose to live according to His word. You, 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 you know it, you know, uh, we see that in church, but uh, actually it's true. It's true, you see that blessed is the man, happy is the man who lives in this way. The second word that is used a lot also in the New Testament is eulogio. That the English word eulogy comes from this word. It has to do with our, our words, our expressions. It's like if someone dies, you go to the funeral, we will pronounce a eulogy what this person, how wonderful this person has been, how this person's life has impacted ourselves, the qualities of this person. We, we kind of praise and see all the good things of that person. Is that right? So that's a eulogy. So that's the word. That's what the word blessing means in, in the New Testament. And you find it in James chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. With it, the tongue or tongue, 
With our tongue, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth, the mouth of a Christian, comes blessing and cursing, which doesn't mix together. It shouldn't be there. My brothers and my sisters, these ought not to be. There shouldn't be blessing and cursing in the same mouth. Because God did not call us to curse. Because if God would call us to curse, he would himself be a curser. And God is not in the business of cursing. He is the business of redempting, re redeeming, buying back, saving, not condemning, uh, pr prosperity, blessing, happiness. He wants the, this fellowship, this relationship. God blesses. When God thinks of your life, he doesn't have things negative. You know, when, when, when look at Peter and the Bible. When Jesus saw Peter, he says, you are Simon. But to me, you are Peter. You're the, you're the rock. You have a future. You will be a leader. When, when you will convert, you will lead. You, know, you, you will bring back your brothers. You will, you will strengthen your brothers. So when Jesus looks at you, when he created you, he blessed you. That's how God things and he sees life and he sees you and he sees his purpose there is no cursing with you there's no evil intent we read in james that don't think that god tempts there's no evil in god all good gifts come from our father there's no change he, this is the way he is he is love he is is good so when he looks at your life he blesses you with a promise he blesses you with a positive outcome, with a wish and a desire. That's what blessing means, something good, a, a praise. And that includes the promises of God. Is that a better blessing than the, the promises of God? I will, I will, I will never leave you. Miriam, Miriam in the camp is saying, do you think that Jesus has forsaken you? No, Jesus has not forsaken me. He provided for us. So that's the kind of uh, faith and outcome, uh, the, the view that we need to have uh, of our God. God is a blesser. Amen? And, and uh, Hebrew chapter 1, uh, verse 6, before you approach God, you must know that, first of all, there is a God. He exists and who He is. And that He is the rewarder of those who earnestly seek him you, you 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 seek something for your life go to god god will reward you if you seek him earnestly you you seek him you seek his goodness it's a bit like um, like a child and and his father the child you don't have to train him to be like that it's it's built we are wired this way we are made this way a child who grows into a normal family has this innocent expectation to be loved. That's inherent to, to who he is. He just expects his parents to treat him well, take care of him. He doesn't think about it. He doesn't use philosophy to ask deep questions. It is a taken. This is how he sees life. My parents love me. He, he, he's sure of that. It is built inside. So he's expecting good things from his parents. And he's expecting when it is his birthday to have a gift. He's expecting always, he's looking forward to that. And he needs it. He needs to be loved. So as it is in the physical, it is also in the spiritual. So as we approach God and we look to God, we, wh why do we always seek blessing? Why do you want blessing? Why does in church we... we pronounce the word bless and blessing so much. Why, when we greet one another, says, God bless you. You write to someone, you finish an email, a WhatsApp, God bless. Always bless, bless, bless. Why do we seek blessing? It's simple. God made us this way. Because this is how we relate to him. We know he's good and we expect that his goodness to, to come to us. So that is all found in the word eulogy. Amen? Hallelujah. If we take these four words, then the Old Testament and the New Testament, and we bring them all together in a summary, we find that a, a blessing is a statement of goodwill. 
is a statement of a good wish, a statement of happiness. We, we, we think about it and we wish it for someone. It may be a promise, we call it a, a blessing. A statement of blessing or a wish for God to restore his favor on someone else. You, you, when you say God bless you, you're saying, I wish God will restore his goodness on you. I wish that you will prosper. I wish that things will go well with you. This is my, my feeling, my emotion for you. I wish it for you and I believe that God wants to do it for you. That is part of who we are. We are called to bless and to approach one another, to wish for the one well-being of uh, my brothers and uh, my sister. God's original design and creation was that mankind would experience prosperity, well-being, and fulfillment. But that design was destroyed when sin entered the world. The problem is always with sin. It destroys, it perverts everything. What God intended, when God created the world, He says, Blessed are you, the word, the plants, the birds, the, the, the nature, and the human being. Blessed. And when God finished creating, he says, everything is good. And he did it for us. But sin came into this world and destroyed this wonderful relationship. So next slide, Ephesians chapter 3 tells us that we bless God for all the blessings that he gives us in Christ. So we are so excited when you receive Jesus Christ and, uh, and you start to walk and uh, have answers to prayer and enjoy the blessing of God. We are so excited that we bless God. We see good things about God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You are so good, Lord. Uh, wonderful. What a wonderful God you are. That's we bless our Father for all the good things that he has done into our lives. That's what Ephesians is saying. Also blessing, also in, in, a, in a certain point of view, uh, includes the discipline of God. You know, when we mess up and we drift away, and we are going to go in sin, and our communication with God is going to be destroyed or affected negatively, because sin builds a wall between God and us. God is going, because of his love, to discipline us, correct and remove whatever things that is affecting us negatively. So it's going to hurt. The disciplines of God hurt. That's what we read in Hebrews chapter, chapter 12. The discipline, we should be rejoicing when God disciplines us because God wants you into heaven. He wants you into the eternal. So whatever is blocking you to be with him, he will do everything in his love to correct you. So there's also a blessing. It's a blessing when it hurts. A blessing when God correct us and, and, and transform our, our lives. Amen? And we find that in Acts chapter 3, verse 26. God has sent his special servant, Jesus. He sent him to you first, to the Jews. He sent him to bless you. Okay? He sent him to bless you. And how, in this case, is he blessing? By causing you, each of you, to turn away from evil ways. So every time God bring you back or do anything that is needed to bring you to repentance and bring you back on the right way. It is a blessing because God wants to bless you in this way. And uh, the verse that we have been looking in 1 Peter 3, 9, we are called to bless and called to receive uh, a blessing. So when you look at the context of blessing in the Old Testament and the New Testament, you will see that one of the contexts, many times it's in persecution and in suffering. Because in persecution and in suffering, we don't feel to bless. You feel to get angry and you feel to get a revenge and you feel to beat the guy you know, on the head and all of this and the, the bad husband or the, the neighbors or whatever it is. You just want to do something mean. You know, that's how you, you feel. But it says, especially in persecution and in suffering, give back blessing instead of evil for evil. So in blessing. Num another another uh, illustration or application to blessing, blessing in the Old Testament and in the New Testament is often related to liberality or generosity. This is the, the context of that. So 
If you look at proverb, the next slide, proverb 11, 25, whoever brings blessing will be enriched. Okay, so that is the um, ESV saying that, but other Bible version use the word uh, liberal, the soul, the liberal soul, or the generous soul, or the one who gives freely, or the generous man. So these are different Bible versions. So it, this one here is really has to do with the giving, the, general, the generosity of people. But the word is the same birakau that we have looked before. Blessing. It's all really the word bless. The one, the soul that bless. But how does he bless here in that particular case? He blesses and giving freely. He, he has learned the, the joy of giving. He has learned the blessing of blessing. You understand that? You are blessed when you bless. And here it says here, he will be, and actually the real expression is he will be made fat. Ah, oh, how many would like to be fat? <laughs> you know, but in that sense here it is, it is a good thing. It is a good thing in that context to be fat because it is an illustration, it is to bring a picture, abundance, satisfactions, good things, yeah, so good, mm. it means anointing, satisfy, abundance, it all means all of these things prosper. So blessing also has to do with liberality, learning this liberality. And another aspect, another blessing for those who bless is that they will leave a legacy. People who bless leave a legacy. And it says it in the next verse, good people will be remembered as a blessing. Is that right? A good person, when, when they depart, they have so many good things. It says, he touched me in this way. This is not even dying, but leaving maybe a, a job, a colleague, or a, a, somebody moves to another country, and a, you, you know that person has helped you in your Christian life. And then you say goodbye, and then you have good things. You are blessing the name of that person. You are praising. You are giving eulogy of the, how this person has been good uh, to you. So why do we always hear people talking about blessing? Next slide. First is because God made us this way. This is the nature of God. And to relate to God, we understand his blessing, we want his blessing, and we, just like a child I explained before, we expect this relationship to work in this way. Number two, as we are blessed, we move on in our Christian life, and as we are blessed, we discover something, we learn something from being with another in the church, from the example of one another, we learn the joy, we discover the joy of blessing others, of giving money, of supporting someone, of helping somebody in need. We discover the joy, we move on, we grow. Number three, the church is a place of blessing. It's a place where we love one another and when we bless each other. When you come to church, whether you are aware or not, you receive a blessing. You receive the blessing of peace. You receive a blessing of a release of your work, intense pressure, discouragement, everything that went wrong this week. You come to church, you will some, somehow either in singing and talking to someone or just being together, it will do you good. It will bring something. And what you receive being in church, it comes from God, from God the Holy Spirit. You know the church is not a dead organization, it's just a place, a club. It is a place where the Holy Spirit dwells. So when you come here as a child of God, God is doing something for you. He is speaks to you, he lifts you up, he builds you up, he does something. When you leave this place, you have been transformed, encouraged, comforted, healed. You have had an encounter with God. Something has touched your heart or somebody in the church. The church is a place of, of blessing. You realize the promise of God. The promise of God are a pronouncements. They are a pronouncements of how God wants to bless you. He says, I will. I will do this, I will do that. And this is the promise of God, and he wants. This is a pronouncement of how God wants to, to bless you. One last thought. 
When you go to work on Monday, you wake up in the morning and it's hard and you know it's going to be hard this week going to go to, to work but I want you to think this way on Monday when you go to work in the last few months we have heard a lot about the Muslim yeah? a lot of Muslim they're here they are there they are everywhere but did you realize that Christian we are more than two millions billions people that's a lot of people in this world two billions Billion, yeah, two billion. That's a lot more than two billion. So when you go to work on Monday morning and you've been to church on Sunday, built up and blessed, released in the blessing of God, you are going into the workplace and the world along with two billion more people just like you. That we have been commanded to bless others, regardless of whatever situation, the pressures, people are nice to you or not. We are commanded to bless in order to receive a blessing. Is that right? So you are not alone. So Monday morning, when you, uh, you know, go to work, don't, don't go defeated, okay? You go to work along with two billion Christians built up in the Holy Spirit and ready to work ready to love, ready with a message, ready with an attitude, ready for whatever task and whatever challenge will be presented to you, you will be able to face it. You will, the wisdom is available, the power is available, the patience, the inner qualities of character, everything is available to you. But you are two billion people going in the world like that to influence this world and impacting this world, amen? So think about it, you have come here today you are being blessed, and we will release you in the blessing just in a moment. And then on Monday morning, two billion people, we are going to bless this world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So why don't we stand together this morning, and as you are leaving, we, I want to close the service in a way that we almost never do, except in very special occasion. And in Lighthouse, it is not a, a, a practice to do that, to pronounce a blessing. Uh, many churches who are a bit more traditional, they, they finish with what we call a blessing. But this morning, I want to bless the families. It is a family fun day, but it is also a day where we emphasize the church as a family and we are made of families. All those of you who go to work faithfully day after day to provide for your family, whether it is fun or not, you deserve a blessing. You need also a blessing. Raising children, you are tired, good mood, bad mood, good temperature, bad temperature, sickness or whatever happens, you deserve a blessing. Amen? Amen. So Monday to Saturday or whatever, you go to work and you carry on and you carry on and you carry on your responsibilities because you want to take care of your family. You, you certainly deserve and need a blessings and we want to give you that blessing this morning mothers and fathers who dedicate yourselves even though you are tired tired of going to work but you have a family you have children tired and then the children are demanding and then you are you know pushing your your tiredness aside and you are taking giving your best your patience and your love to your children and to your husbands you need a blessing amen for your families. So this morning, you, you see the next slide. There is a, a, a blessing here, but I want you to see that not as words and only spoken. This, I want you to understand this is God this morning pronouncing this blessing over you, that you will receive it as we will pray it for you, but that you will feel that you will receive it, that you really receive it as from God directly, and that when you attack your weak, when you attack what's coming ahead, you will attack in the blessing and ready to bless. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready? You may close your eyes and just lift your hands to heaven and be the, the recipient of this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you. Be gracious to you. Go forth in the world 
and peace. Be of good courage. Strengthen and support the weak and the needy. Hold fast to what is good. Render to no one evil for evil, but on the contrary, bless, for, this is, for to this you were called. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and rem remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Father God.